This is Two Chicks Talking Flicks, where we review movies, love them or hate them. Someone's got to do it. So enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Sarah, and this is Two Chicks Talking Flicks and anything else that gets in the mix. And I'm joined here today with uh, Sarah and a Sarah. Hey. <laughs> Wh- which Sarah am I? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> That's not at all confusing. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we need me to be Ken for the for this, I, I'll I'll take the I'll take the hit. I'll be <laughs> Alan or Midge, if- <laughs> or I can be Skipper. Skipper. <laughs> oh my God! No, I didn't know Alan was an option. I want to be Alan. Yeah, let's all be Alan. <laughs> Hi, Alan. Alan. <laughs> or I can Hi, be Alan. <laughs> I can be whatever that character was that, um, can you be McKinnon. weird Barbie? Yeah. Weird, weird Barbie. Barbie. <laughs> yeah. I think we're all a all little right, bit. Start stretching. Barbie. You gotta, you gotta do the split. Oh man. <laughs> and then when, she, okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll get into that. Yeah. I'm sure. All right. So, uh, I am joined here by a lot of other Sarah's, you know, just like the Barbie movie. I had to get all my girls with the same name. Um, <laughs> here but why don't you guys introduce yourselves tell people where what podcast you're representing who's going first you can okay go i first. guess i'll go first yeah. since i'm already talking um okay so i'm sarah i have <laughs> uh, i'm another sarah with an h yeah. and also from dallas and i have a podcast called frugalpreneur and the tagline is building a business on a bootstrap budget and then recently launched another one called Lesby Honest Candid Convos with Later in Life Lesbian. Hey, what? <laughs> well, welcome to the show. How about the other Sarah? Oh, hello. I am Sarah with no H because H's are ill. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't get sued by... Um, uh, NBC for that. <laughs> I am the co-host of the Branded Podcast, which is the um, comprehensive guide to creative branding, and the president of Favorite Daughter Media. And I am here because you guys had too many H's in your show, and I had to break it up. <laughs> true, true. I, d- I should have gotten my friend Sarah um, to come on as well. Then we just, she also is like H-less. Oh my gosh, four Sarahs would just be... And I have another friend named Sarah, but she doesn't do podcasting, so I don't know how that would work out. And the other Sarah here, you're from Austin, so all three of us are from Texas. I don't know if I'm from Texas. I don't fit in that much because I'm from New York, but I live in Texas. I moved here for the tacos, and it's been going great. (laughs) Well, you know what I mean. You, we all live in Texas. (laughs) Well, you, you. This is a very southern episode. You, you come for the tacos, but you stay for the queso. You know. Oh yeah. That's what oh, I yeah. come here for. <laughs> um, or the guacamole. True. Not a guac girl. Not a guac girl. Oh. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I know. Sure. I'm going to get kicked out of the state. <laughs> <laughs> well, just keep low key, you know? Just don't tell anybody. No one has to know. Yeah. My, my dirty little secret. Yes. Keep it on the DL. <laughs> Avocado, don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. If that's not the tagline for this episode, I don't know what else is. (laughs) Why even talk about Barbie? Let's just talk about tacos. Yes, yes. Well, um, so did you? Did any of you guys uh, grow up with a lot of Sarahs? I had one in my grade, and it was funny because we both we both were not only were Sarah, we were Sarah Nicole. Oh wow. Mm. Yeah, so there were two of us. It was Sarah Nicole and Sarah Nicole. We did um, not have um, repeat middle names, Sarah's, where I'm from. Well, like for me, my best friend through junior high, high school, and even into college, um, were both Sarah Elizabeth. Oh, wow. Other yeah. Sarah, what's your middle name? Now we need to know. Uh, mine's Jean. Jean. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's like so Texas. Uh, well, what's funny <laughs> is I did not grow up here, but um, I just feel like you need to be like on a pony. <laughs> it does sound very country, right? I've always said that. Sarah Can Jean, you be a country singer? Uh, you know, low key, a little bit. Maybe I'm country singer Barbie. That'll be my. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wait, so, what is my Barbie? Ooh. 
uh, New York Bobby. Oh. oh, why am I the mean one? <laughs> you don't have to be mean. I'll just be favorite daughter, Barbie. It's there on brand. Go. Always on brand. I love it. <laughs> Other um, Sarah's a frugal Barbie. Frugal Barbie, hey. She does not come with a purse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you come with all the accessories because you don't do the whole like sold separately because you're frugal. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's true. I come with a mic. Oh, yeah. Mac my hand. Um, so I <laughs> went to school with five Sarahs. Oh, and wow. one moved away. And the next year, another one moved in. And I have... There's like a quota. And yeah. you always have to be at quota. Yeah. It's, like, the, it's like your Uno hand. Like you, you, you put one away, but then you have to take another. I'm friends with all of them still on Facebook to this day. <laughs> so... Um, but yeah, we were all in the same Girl Scout troop. So there was six of us, I think. And, um, you know, the eighties was a hotbed of, uh, Sarah activity and my best <laughs> friend, her name is Sarah. So, you know, it's funny. Cause in my little like network, like professional people, there are so many Sarah's like we're all Sarah. Yeah, so crazy. anytime I talk to other people that know the rest of them, we always have to be like, okay, well, which Sarah are you talking about? Well, see, <laughs> I feel like when you're with your group of Sarah's, everybody knows who they're talking about, but like an outsider, they may not know what Sarah that you're talking about. It's very just always like talking about a Sarah. Yeah. It's, it's very much like the Barbie movie. They know who they're directing it to. <laughs> oh but, yeah. You know? So, okay, so speaking of kind of the the Barbie thing, oh. like in the beginning of the movie when they're all like, hey, Barbie, hey, Barbie, hey, and they kind of kept doing it for good. I don't know. I was like, is the whole movie going to be like this? Are they going to be saying that? Like, <laughs> is that the whole script of this I movie? I would have been fine with that. Oh, really? <laughs> Just I mean, it was fine. Hey, Barbie, hey, Barbie, hey, Barbie. <laughs> it was fine, like, as long as they did it. And I'm glad it, like stopped at a certain point but i was like okay this, this is gonna be overkill if the whole <laughs> two hours or whatever however long it was it's gonna be like every time they talk to each other they address address each other yeah but then there's just ken <laughs> yeah it's just ken. <laughs> poor but he is ken enough he is <laughs> enough I love well him. there was also where they were like hey ken hey ken hey ken and then alan He's just Alan. <laughs> they only made one. They just continued what? it. Okay, now I'm blanking on that actor's name, but I adore him. Oh, Michael Sarah. Yes. <laughs> I feel like Michael Sarah has never actually been cast in anything. He just accidentally wanders onto set <laughs> and doesn't know how to leave. Yeah. And that is the character he plays in everything. It's just like, I- I'm just here. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's and yeah. I say that with all of the love in my like that I possess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I hadn't thought of that before, but now that you mention it, it, it does kind of feel like that. And it's kind of it's it's amazing, and it's kind of funny that his I mean, his last name is spelled C E R A, I believe, but it's pronounced Sarah. So oh hey. my god, I didn't even notice that. Uh, uh, don't worry. <laughs> okay, it. Michael, fine. Sarah, you need to accidentally wander into this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's guys, the one we're missing. Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> if you reach under your chair, Michael Sarah. You get a Michael Sarah. You get a Michael Sarah. <laughs> so, um, I it's been like I've gone to a cup a few movies um this year. Um, but the last like two movies I've been to, I don't know if if like Okay, back in the day when people would get real dressed up to go to the theater, right? You know, they'd wear their pearls and their uh, furs and all that kind of stuff. I think that was like the Broadway theater. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. you know, people would go to the theater. Like, if I was supposed to do that to go to, like, see Batman in theaters and I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like people are now doing that, but at movie theaters. Because when I went to see Little Mermaid everybody was decked out in like little mermaid attire even adults like groups of adult women were all dressed up in their little like uh aerial uh mouseketeer ears and aerial shirts and 
bringing their. Did they have in. like the fin? Like yeah, like I, everything. But how did they walk in that? Well, they they weren't wearing it like that. Um, first but of all, like, they swam. You know, they had like <laughs> blankets and stuff that had uh, mermaid scales on it, and just all mm. sorts of stuff, right? So then, when I saw when I went to see Barbie, everybody's wearing pink. Guys, girls, kids, everyone's wearing pink. And I was like, wow, this is, it's, it's become such an occasion. And I'm mm. really digging it. Like the only time I ever felt that kind of thing was when I went and saw Titanic. Cause I felt like just every, there was such a buzz around the theater and I was so excited. And there's just like, it was so, cause I went to a brand new theater to see it and it was so, so extravagant and everything looked brand new and clean just like in the movie so when I went and saw this movie and everybody's just like having a moment they're all in pink and just everybody's excited it, it's really cool like going back to the movies is is been super fun this whole year do you I think feel like it's- with the with the Barbie movie, I, I want, like I, I give that credit to their marketing people yeah. because they were doing all those like Barbie boxes. Mm-hmm. So everyone mm-hmm. wanted to dress up as Barbie to be in the Barbie box. Uh, and I will say um, with the theater that I went to did not have one. Yeah, they didn't. And have I am mind. still angry. Yeah, I, I think the one I went to, they didn't have the box, but they had some kind of like photo display thing you could do. Nothing. And, yeah, I don't I recall people at mine wearing pink, but maybe I just wasn't paying attention. I don't know. But I don't know if it's like a post-COVID thing, so people are more excited about going to movies now when since it was shut down for so long, or if it's just because, or or maybe people are only doing it for the bigger movies or the ones that like, you know, is very, like you could... Barbie, okay, so you wear pink. Uh, yeah. Little Mermaid, you wear, you know, the long hair and whatever. But, like, if it's just some average random movie that doesn't have a whole thing around it, then probably people aren't dressing up as whatever. Did you guys wear pink? I did, yeah. No, I didn't. What? Me and my I friend, didn't even. Me and my friend didn't even talk about it, and we both wore pink. <laughs> oh, I had every like I was digging through my closet, realizing that I own a lot less pink than I thought I did, considering yeah. it's like my color. But <laughs> I was in a pink floral dress. I had uh, for my birthday, I got um, the it was like a new Kendra Scott like pink um, like sunrise jewelry set, like earrings and a necklace. So I had to wear those. I had pink sandals, um, a pink hair clip. Like I was as pink as I could possibly be. <laughs> my pink purse. I have two shirts that are pink. One, it's not really pink. And two, it has pink on it, but it's an itchy shirt. So I didn't wear it. So I wore the sort of pink shirt. <laughs> it was a more kind of like a coral, but it was as close as I could get. You know what? It's the effort. It's the effort that counts. Yeah, I tried. I Actually, I don't remember what I wore. So I maybe inadvertently wore something that has pink in it. I don't think you've ever accidentally worn pink in your life. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know what's funny is like I used to hate pink, but like the older I'm getting, the more I'm liking it. And so like more of the stuff that I'm getting has like pink and purple and I don't know. I'm actually not a pink fan. I've never really liked the color pink. You don't like the singer pink? (laughs) (laughs) I was more of like a purple fan uh, growing up. Um but pink washes me out. I just look like pale, very, very pale when I wear pink. You just haven't found your shade. Yeah, well, that's why coral, I wear more coral if I'm going to wear, mm. you know, something in that color family uh, because it, it actually brightens me up and makes me look like I have little pink cheeks and stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's my brand pink. color, so everything I own, like everything I do is pink. Like my, <laughs> oh, my just chair I'm sitting in is pink. My like my is. eyes pop if I wear blue, so I mm. try to wear blues. Okay. Like your eyes pop out of your sockets. Yes, <laughs> like a like a pug. Like they're like oh god, yeah. oh like little Otis. Yeah, mm-hmm. I sneeze too hard and they just pop right out. 
<laughs> no, um, my eyes change color. They're gray, and they change color with my background. So, like, school photos, if they put you in that blue background, my eyes were so blue. Huh. I always thought my eyes were blue until about two years ago when I was like, oh, oh wow. Straight up, no, my eyes are gray. See, I think mine are gray, too, unless they're in direct sunlight, but people tell me I'm wrong. Yeah. Don't hmm. let me have gotten a little bit off topic. You're wrong. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Did we even say what movie we're talking? I mean, I mean, no, I know we've talked about it, but I yeah. feel like we haven't actually done like a. So we're talking about the Barbie movie. Were we Thank supposed you, to do Sarah. that? <laughs> <laughs> this is my show now. Yes. <laughs> um. Well, so we were kind of talking. Um. So I remember when we would go see like the um superhero movies or Twilight or whatever, and people would dress up for that. But that's like a fandom, and I don't feel like, unless you were like a super fan, you probably didn't dress up for those. Okay, I wore a bat suit to the Batman movie, I'm not going (laughs) to lie. What would you wear to a Twilight movie? Um, A a mask so no one knows you're watching the Twilight movie? There you go. (laughs) Uh, I don't remember what people wore, but I feel like people dressed up. Or they like... My sister and her friends would like make custom shirts. Yeah, yeah, okay. that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just love that people are so into going to movies and like really making an event. What was my mm-hmm. that was my point? Um, and I feel like this is a great movie for that. Unfortunately, it's right before all of uh, the industry shut down. So, <laughs> mm, yeah, that's true. Will we ever have that again? I don't know. It's sad, but hey, if this is the way it goes out, that was such a bang, such a great movie. <laughs> I heard some. Well, someone told me this, and I haven't fact checked it, but and I don't know if this is in the U.S. or global. I assume global, um, but that Barbie has made over a billion dollars. Oh I yeah, they were close to that on their first weekend. I mean, I've heard of hundreds of millions, but a billion—that's yeah. like not very common. Yeah, it it deserves it. <laughs> it did. It yeah. I, I you know I like to play my uh, cards close to the vest, but I loved this movie. Um, you know I'll give my rating later, but I thought it was great. I enjoyed so much. So there's a radio station that I listened to. I brought it up before, and a couple people saw the movie like a day or two after I'd seen it. And they were talking about how these two girls they were sitting next to were dying laughing. They were laughing at everything. And they were like, I think they were high. And Uh I was like, were they sitting next to me and my friend? Because we were cracking up the entire time. Oh, I was cackling. Yes. I was laughing so hard. And I felt like Like not everybody else. 10 out of 10, no note. Was laughing. Like her and I were dying. It was so Here's funny. the thing, though. Did any, either of you going to see this movie actually know what it was going nope. to be about? No. I had no idea. I'm like, I, is, is there going to be a plot or are we just going to be like playing with Barbies? Either way, <laughs> I'm here for it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I actually put in my notes, it says, so happy trailer didn't ruin the movie. Like, that's what a trailer mm. should do. It should get you thinking like, huh, I wonder what this movie might be about. I have to go see it to know because it gave nothing away except for the fact that there was Ken's and there was Barbie's. And that yeah. was it. I, I feel thought- like, well, I hope they did that on purpose. I hope they did that. I mean, I know they did it on purpose, but I hope it's for the reason that I think it is, <laughs> which is the whole movie is like, come on, Barbie, let's go destroy the patriarchy. Yeah. And they didn't give that away or hint at it mm-hmm. so that men would still go mostly because they're getting dragged, but they'll still go yeah, and then kind of mm. get like slapped in the face by like, you're the problem. Mm. So speaking of like, okay, so I originally, I mean, I played with Barbies and all this stuff, but I wasn't really like that interested in seeing the movie, at least not in the theater. I was like, ah, rental. Although oh. I hadn't watched a trailer or anything, but then it was all the like, supposed backlash and drama and I don't know, whatever fake 
flag, whatever, like, you know, people getting up in arms about it. But I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm going to go see it now just because I'm curious. But like, okay, so I'm watching it and I'm like, people are really pulling at strings here or straws, I guess, because I, I mean, it was probably one of the cleanest movies, first of all, that I've seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. And then, I don't know, it's like people were bitching about the message or something or some of the content in it or whatever. And I'm just like, okay, first of all, it's a PG-13 movie, which to me, it could have even been PG, but whatever. Um, So if you're taking your five-year-old daughter to it and you don't like some of the stuff in it, well, I mean, that's your problem. Mm -hmm. And and then also like with the political kind of, I don't know, whatever, I'm just like, it wasn't. I just don't get it. Like why people were so upset about it. It was seemed fine to me. Yeah. Like it wasn't as, um, down with the patriarchy as, as people make it sound like, yeah. Like, um, I feel like that was a, a B storyline. This, the A storyline is Barbie realizing that they had made a perfect world in their little world and um you know the b story is ken's upset about it like (laughs) just well and like another example is i saw some posts on facebook about how the movie is anti-mom or something against motherhood What? and like i i think they're referring to that um like that kind of first scene where the the girls are playing with baby dolls and they're Mm -hmm. like you know, but I didn't interpret it that way at all. I interpreted it as, okay, before Barbie, all girls or boys, whoever, all people had to play with were like baby dolls. Yeah. Um, as far as dolls go. And now, and, and Barbie kind of comes along and now there's a, a doll that's older and looks more like them and more, like, it's not just a baby. It could be more like a friend or whatever. Yeah. Like, that's how I interpret it. Not like anti-mom, anti-mothering, anti-motherhood. It's just, that's all it was before Barbie came along. And now it's more like... I feel Barbie. like there's a habit of anytime something is in support of something, the people that aren't in support of it have to make it seem like it's against something else. Mm. Like, you don't have to be like attacking something to be supporting something else. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so this is supporting feminism, but then the people that are anti-feminist think that feminism is equal to man hating. It's like, no, we, it's not that we hate you. We, some of us do, I do, but <laughs> <laughs> it's that we're supporting women. Like it doesn't have to be one or the other. Right. Like, can we just all agree that those baby dolls are creepy? Oh, I'm terrified of dolls. Yeah. Like, dolls are my number one fear. Like, I love Barbies, but I hated those little baby dolls. They're creepy. Yeah, they kind of are now that you mention it. And the, like, Chucky doll. Yeah. Chucky doll's the one that doesn't scare me. Oh, yeah. Just because he's honest. (laughs) He's honest. It's like all the other dolls are like, oh, we're not trying to kill you. We're just sitting in the corner of your room staring at you. But Chucky's like, oh, no, 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 no. I I I do want to kill you, though. (laughs) So, like, I appreciate his honesty. You know, I have a, I had, or I might still have it. It was a Hello Kitty doll and Hmm. it had a pull tab in the back and it would say different stuff. It was like, let's have a tea party. You're my best friend. Well, years later, it started to wear out and he'd be like, let's have a tea party. (laughs) That was when the devil officially (laughs) came into the picture. Or maybe it was just aging. And I was like, oh, this is so creepy. And it wasn't even like a baby doll. It was just like. (laughs) Oh, y'all want to hear something creepy? No. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Remember, um, I think, was it a. No, it wasn't a troll. It was a, a um, yeah, a Furby. Ugh, okay, so yes. I was never into Furbies, but like my grandma had given me one, and 
never play with it, whatever, whatever. Like, but then I found it one time and anyway, and it was creeping me out because it was like talking and stuff. So I took the batteries out. Oh, it still worked. And it still worked. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell? Ours was yeah, like going off. People on the are all surprised itself. right now. People are all so surprised right now that they've officially announced like aliens exist. We know we had Furbies. Yeah. <laughs> so have Furbies. y'all experienced Furbies talking without the batteries? Uh, mine was dead on the shelf for years. And then like one day it just talked. Yeah. That's what mine was kind of doing. <laughs> Super creepy. You're like, and then I just battery batteries. And then you're like, Oh, it's the Furby talking. Yeah, I uh, ended up throwing it away after <laughs> Did it I'm surprised back? it didn't find its way back into <laughs> my house. You say that now, but have you have you looked? <laughs> well, I've moved you a few times. You just there. haven't found it yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, but don't worry, what? it found you. There's going to be a Furby on my freaking doorstep after this. Do you happen mm-hmm. to have a photo of said Furby? Oh my God, other Sarah, can we send her a Furby? <laughs> and just not say anything. <laughs> That you just said something. Yeah, no, I, I was talking to other Sarah. This is stop, stop eavesdropping. This is not, this is not for you. We need to send her a Furby. Yes. <laughs> the singing so, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Do you guys ever think about dying? <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever think about death? <laughs> that was, that was probably one of my favorite parts. <laughs> uh, my favorite part was at the beginning when they're just like showing Barbie, it's just like the commercially part. Yeah. And when they look at her hands, the pointer finger is a little bit raised because I remember thinking as a kid, like, why are her hands like that? Like, why is her finger raised? And then they're looking at Margot Robbie pretending to be, and they got that right. They actually, she actually raised her finger slightly and it was the smallest detail, but I was just like, Oh my God, they crushed it. Oh, now that you mention it, yeah, I haven't. I mean, I noticed obviously the feet thing and yeah. how the feet are like arched or whatever. Obviously, mm-hmm. that was like a whole thing. But you know what? No, I think I did notice the finger thing now that you mention it. Um, like, I'm pretty sure I slapped my friend that I was watching it with. And I'm just like, <laughs> look at the hand. <laughs> She's still mad at me. Yeah, so why is her finger raised? Anyway? I don't know. I mean, maybe I can they could put a ring on her or something. Like maybe it's uh, for the accessories or maybe that's like how oh, it's probably how they get her to hold things. Like they slide like the handle of a purse between her hand and that finger. I don't uh, know. But they did it on sense. a human and 10 out of 10. No, I'll no. have my uh, fact checkers look that up. <laughs> so, yeah, they can just get on. Can that. someone call Greta? I mean, I can think of one reason, but I mean, she said she doesn't have a vagina, so. She does at the uh, end. She does become a person. Which is like definitely the weirdest ending to a movie I've ever seen in my whole I life. I know. And that I'm here last for it. line. <laughs> Just, I feel we were supposed to think she was going into like a big job interview or something. Yeah, right? I know. But, that's what I thought. And I was like, oh, she's going to be like a fashion guru or something. <laughs> oh, I thought she was going to be on like the Senate. Oh. You clearly did not get the point of this movie. Nope. I, I and thought then I she guess was she... like fashion department of the Barbie of the Mattel. <laughs> okay, so here's my question at that last line. So is she going in because now she has one and she needs to get it checked? Mm-hmm. Or is she going in to like have one made and created? Because like, no, she's it, a person now. Yeah, she's well, a because person. it's like and when she... The thing you need to do as... Okay, I don't know what your mom told you, but (laughs) Sarah, you are a woman now Uh and there are doctors that you need to see to make sure that as a woman, you are healthy (laughs) and thriving. So we're going to sit down after this. I'll help you make the phone call, make your appointment (laughs) and they're going to shove things inside of you and it's going to be very uncomfortable. (laughs) Okay. Well, no, but (laughs) men, if you thought the COVID test, was invasive. Uh, yeah. Just get a pap smear. Yeah. Just get oh. a pap smear. Or okay, any but other like, procedure girls have to get that guys get, you know, medicine. Okay, for. but okay, I see what your point is, but here's the thing though. When she was a human, um on you know, when she came to She I wasn't a human. Earth. She was just no. in the human world. Yeah. Okay. 
And now she's a human. Yes. So, no, okay. Because I was like, well, when she was human before, she didn't. Have, yeah. yeah, okay. Jeez. So she was, she was still adult. Sarah, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, she seemed really excited about that gynecologist appointment, by the way. Well, she's, she's never gonna, done it. Well, she's going to leave, like, thinking. Less excited. Yeah. Like, she's a little naive, but it's okay. So, she dated like the rest of us. Did anybody else think Alan might be the father of Mitch's baby? The father of what? Mitch's Mitch. baby. Yeah. She was the teen mom or the, the mom. or Oh, whatever. the pregnant Barbie. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. Well, he couldn't be because he doesn't have the, the equipment. Well, that's why I think that's why they have this. <laughs> exactly. That's why she got discontinued. She is a medical marvel. Uh, she is the Virgin Mary. Yeah. They should have named her Mary, not Mitch. I think a little too on the nose. Like at the end, though. Oh, so <laughs> my sister just told me that people, like yesterday, she told me that people are upset with this movie because they didn't have enough diversity. And I was like, they had a girl in a wheelchair. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought, it, I mean, I'm white, so I, I'm not the person to speak on this, but I thought it was pretty diverse i thought they did a good job yeah i thought there was all ethnicities and they had you know people of different handicaps and i i was like no I, i'm pretty sure it's pretty diverse i as far as i could tell i mean especially with weird barbie <laughs> i mean yeah that made me feel seen <laughs> right <laughs> she was played with too hard life is We've played with played me too, too hard, hard. Yeah, we've all been playing too hard. Um, did anybody else think that Will Ferrell used to be a kin? Um, like his character? Yeah, because like, okay, so Will Ferrell, for those who haven't seen the movie, he's the CEO of Mattel, and um, he knows all about this whole Barbie coming into the real world thing. And um, hmm. the way he was acting made me and my friend think that maybe he used to be a kin. Oh, I mean, that's a good point. Maybe so. I hadn't thought of that, but. And that's why, like, he was so brosive when he was out in the real world, because he was like, wait, we can we're in charge of everything. And hmm. he had all men in his cabinet. Like, it just seems to oh, me. Oh, yeah, like, I just saw him as a, a man. <laughs> just, <laughs> just a normal dude. Like, it's on brand for men. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Um, but I did love when Ken was just like, I found out the patriarchy wasn't really about horses and I lost interest. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> amazing I just really thought it was about horses well and I feel like the screensaver that they have on their TV the horses I feel like that is a real screensaver that they had on TVs for oh, wow. um, Barbie because my friend had all the Barbie stuff I didn't but she had everything super jealous hmm. um, but I'm pretty sure she had a TV and I want to say that the horse photo was like one of the things that was on there but I could be wrong because hmm. when I saw it I was like that looks so familiar what do y'all think of the music in it I thought that was pretty funny like especially like the Lizzo I think it was Lizzo anyway um, like when Barbie falls from the sky <laughs> and Lizzo's like stops the song and she's like oh girl are you okay <laughs> that I, was I, one I love the everything like um how in barbie's house how everything is fake but she's acting like it's real mm -hmm. and, um, but then she gets into the real world and spills juice all over her yeah. face oh, <laughs> she's like to be never has a thing in it. <laughs> no they did they honestly they did a really good job with it so good with, and it was like a perfect combination of like nostalgia and then making mm -hmm. fun of nostalgia. Mm -hmm. um, 
one thing I found really interesting is when they're going through the montage of all the Barbie stuff, right? At the beginning of the movie. And we see the girls getting um, awards and they're like, yes, I am great. And I did this. Thank you. Yes, I do deserve this award. Thank you. But then when the Kins took over and one of the girls won an award, she was like, oh, that's so sweet. I don't deserve this at all. And they were like so humbled. And I was like, oh, no, they deserve it. They, oh, like, I just thought it was such an interesting way to do that. Did any of you notice that? Well, in the original one, like in the Barbie land, Mm -hmm. it's like role reversal. Yeah. So like the women are in the roles that like in the real world are men. So like Mm -hmm. men are never like, oh, oh no, not me. (laughs) Like, that's okay. Like, of course, I'm the greatest. That's why I deserve this award. Thank you. You're... (laughs) You're spot on. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and then when they're in the real world and she like uh, thinks that the construction workers will be women and she's like <laughs> confused about that. <laughs> and that's when she goes up to them and says, I don't have a vagina. It's like, that's so random. Why would you tell them that? Yeah. But I love that she instantly was like, something is amiss here. Like, <laughs> well, thanks to Barbie, all problems of feminism have been solved. Yes, <laughs> we just need to do what sh- they did. Um, so I love that. Um, in the beginning, you know, before she finds out that she can't <laughs> wear her high heels, um, mm-hmm. how they're just kind of going about their business and. Ken is just waiting, waiting for Barbie to say hello to him. And, uh, it's, he's like a dog. Like he just wants his master to like come and rub its head. Well, I'm sure he probably would like that, but no, um, just waiting for her to acknowledge him. And that's all his job is. He's just beach guy (laughs) waiting for Barbie. He's like the, the, uh, models that would stand outside of the Hollister stores and, <laughs> and swimsuits. Right. Their job is beach. Beach. Mm-hmm. Their job is beach. They're not lifeguards. They're not doing anything. Their job is beach. Yes. Does Hollister still exist? I don't know. I don't know. I think that um, documentary really kind of uh, made it go away. There was a documentary about them? Wasn't there? Well, there, I, was it not Abercrombie and Fitch? Oh, uh, eh, the same I think, thing. Are they not the same store? <laughs> no, they're different, but they might be, like, related somehow. I, I don't know. Virtually the same thing. Yeah, I don't think I ever went into either of those. Hollister is Abercrombie just with naked, half-naked men. <laughs> but wasn't Abercrombie had half-naked men, too. Did they? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't remember. I shopped at Abercrombie a couple times, and I could only buy men's polo shirts. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. about it. I I avoided it. I didn't. I felt felt like I was walking through a gas chamber, and there were no <laughs> lights. I, I no thank you. I <clears> yeah, I don't shopping at a nightclub. Yeah, I remember, like, I don't think I ever went in one, but when I would pass them, I would notice how dark it was. I'm like, this is kind of weird. Yeah. I think American Eagle is the one that I would actually go, well, an Old Navy. I sold you Old Navy, but um, I, I just wonder if all those, I know Old Navy's still around, obviously, but the others, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um. So one thing that made me and my friend laugh so hard was when um, Ken and Ken were fighting and... um, I will beat you both off? Yeah. (laughs) Oh. How can you beat me off when you can't even beat yourself off? (laughs) Oh, yeah. I think that definitely flew over kids' heads. (laughs) We were laughing so hard. Like, ugly laughing. Just crying, laughing. No, that was... And that was, like clever and like just enough 
because it was a pretty clean movie. Yeah, but mm-hmm. that one, but when it was it's like more raunchy than I thought it would be. Like, really? I, I mean, I, there was just like I, parts here and there, and I was like, "Wow, I thought this was like a kids' movie." <laughs> oh, I, I wasn't mean, expecting it to be a kids' movie. Yeah. Um, especially like, I mean, the only parts that were obvious were like the vagina comment and all that crap, but like, yeah, the beat you off, um, that, I mean, obviously adults will get it, but you know, so it's like adult humor, but kids won't obviously get that. So, um, when Ken goes to the real world and he finds that men rule everything. And so he walks into the hospital and he's like, okay, I'm here to do a surgery. And she's (laughs) like, no, you're not a surgeon. And he's like, oh, it's okay. No, I'm a man. Just let me do the surgery. And she's like, no. And he's like, well, I want to talk to the doctor. And she's like, I'm a doctor. And he goes, no, I want to talk to the real doctor. And he finds (laughs) like a guy just hanging out. How preposterous. Yeah. He reads one so, book from the library and all of a sudden he knows everything. I mean, if Ryan Gosling showed up in my hospital room, I wouldn't. I, yeah, go ahead. Cut me open. I don't care. It's fine. You're Ryan Gosling. I just, I'm going to just lay here. I mean, what okay, a cool so, way to go. You know? Right? Like, I don't, I've never found him that. I mean, he's not. I mean, he's average looking to me. Well, let's be honest. I mean, I was going to say uh, you're not the target audience. <laughs> well, I mean, but I can recognize uh, an attractive. Apparently person. not. <laughs> I did. I mean, um, I mean, I liked him shirtless. <laughs> so I, I mean, I noticed that. But his face. I'm just kind of like, nah, I don't get it. Yeah. I mean, not everybody's everybody's taste, I guess. You're wrong, but, you know, not everybody's everybody's <laughs> How taste. does it feel to just be so wrong? <laughs> How does it feel to be a woman and be wrong? Yeah, I just feel does like... Does that make you a man? <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of wishing, there. like, they had picked Zac Efron or somebody. Mm. Interesting. I, I've seen this, uh, so this is not my original thought. Is I think I saw it on TikTok. They, the one note, it's still no notes, it's perfect. But having Schmidt from New Girl <gasps> as one of the Kens, like he is Ken. Yes. He is just full Ken energy. Ken energy. Yeah. Oh, I, I guess I, I never watched that show, I don't think. So I don't he know. Even in one of the episodes of New Girl, was wearing the exact same outfit as cowboy ken yeah mm. when it was like the costume party mm-hmm. uh it's that's the first episode they, is that, was that the first one when they run to go save yeah. jess and big stood up yeah he was wearing that outfit like how did they miss schmidt as one I of the new i'd seen that outfit before now that you <laughs> say that that is exactly 100 percent true yes mm-hmm. he would have been fantastic fantastic oh. No, he oh, is, that he was is. a missed opportunity. But again, perfection, no notes. If he was a blonde, that would have been, he would have been right. Right for the part. Um, I love that you guys are not doing patriarchy very well. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. good. Come into my weird house. Hi, I'm Weird Barbie. <laughs> I have a funky haircut and I smell like basement. <laughs> yeah, how do you smell like basement? But we all know what that smells like, right? No, we, it's, yeah. We, we like know. musty? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, a little must. No, that's the one thing I love is like how self aware everything in the movie was. Yes. Like they, like, they knew they were dolls, they knew everything was made up, they knew they smelled like basement. I love when they're in on the joke, you know? That's always fun. Like, yeah, no, that's great. I bet. But because all of the, they all have the same names, it just makes everything even better. Yeah. When like, Barbie's like, Ken's not cool. And then Ken says he is to me. <laughs> so, he also Ken. Oh. <laughs> during one of the parts in the movie, me and my friend looked over at each other and 
we both were like, that guy reminds us of our friend Addison. Um, yesterday was his birthday. So we, we told his wife about this, but when he went and Ken started playing the guitar and he was playing that song and how Mm. four hours later, she's still smiling, but you can tell she wants to kill him. That is exactly how his wife, Stacy looks at him sometimes because (laughs) he's a lot and she's so patient, but that look on her face, I've seen that in Stacy's eyes looking at him like I will murder you later. But right now we're in public and I can't do that. So I'm just going to smile and sit here and listen to you play the song for another four hours. I I did notice this like when they were, the patriarchy had invaded and they were playing the man song. Uh Uh-huh. I love that song, though. <laughs> Me too. I wanna push you push around. You around where I I was. <laughs> like, I wasn't like did they? They were supposed to pick a song that like only men like it. I'm just like that is a jam. <laughs> it's a yeah, song. I love that song. I don't mm. remember what it's called or who sings it, but I can it's think it's Push it. by Matchbox Twenty. Yeah, yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> you know that song. Um, what can't Barbie do? I loved how he was asked the time, and um, then had he this even like asked me what time it was. Yeah, he keeps having that interaction with that lady. It's just like, oh, what is happening? <laughs> was that not such like a Mean Girls moment though? Mm. On October third, he asked me what day it was. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it's October third. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, and on Wednesday, is it Wednesday? I forget. We Wednesday wear pink. Wednesday. Yes. Yeah. Well, in Barbie world, it's always Wednesday. Yeah, pretty much. We went and saw the movie on Wednesday. That's why I wore pink on Wednesday because I was seeing um, the Barbie movie. Wait, I think I saw it on a Wednesday. I don't remember. My friend texted me saying, we're going to see Barbie at 3 p.m. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'll be there. Let me go find all of my pink. Um. So... A little story that I heard on the radio um, when this movie came out that there was an elusive Barbie. It was a Mavs, a, a Dallas Maverick Barbie that apparently is very valuable and there's hardly any of them in existence. And so in 1999, the NBA partnered with Mattel and made these Barbies for each team. Um, I don't know if they're cheerleader Barbies or if they were like basketball player Barbies. Um, I didn't see a photo of it, so I'm not quite sure. But they had the emblem of each team on their sh- outfits. And so um, this mother and daughter, they didn't really like have a lot in common. The mom was really into basketball. The daughter was really into Barbies but they had nothing in common and and they found out that they were having these Barbies. And so they decided to collect them together. And for years they went around trying to find all these different uh, Barbies for each NBA team. Well, um, someone in the ESPN paper had found out about this and they sent their um, reporter on the story to find this elusive um, Mavs basketball Barbie because that's the only one they didn't have in their collection. They went around, like, went and talked to people in Germany, uh, because apparently this lady in Germany is, like, the biggest world collection of Barbie stuff, and she didn't have one. And um, finally, they did find a Barbie. It was someone actually here in Arlington that had one, and they were able to get it and give it to this mom and daughter. And they're, she's, like, grown. She's a nurse now. Um, she's an adult. But for the last, like, 20 years, they've been looking for these Barbies. And I just thought, that's so cool. I and, looked it up. She is a player. She's holding a basketball. Oh, okay. And she has, like, the big, like, Letterman jacket on. Uh, and, like, a uniform with, like, knee pads. So I wonder how much that Barbie is worth. Well, and that's why um, they didn't say how much they paid for it, but the lady wanted cash and she wanted to meet in person (laughs) to give them the Barbie. Um, They said uh, like what probably happened because it was a giveaway. Um, 
So they said, like, dads probably went to the game, brought it home for their daughters, and their daughters were like, well, I'm just going to change it into some other clothes. And they never, you know, didn't keep it in a box or anything. So there's not a lot of them around. You know, they only made so many of them. That's why it's really hard to find them. I just thought it was a really cool story, and it had to do with the Dallas Mavericks here. Because, you know, in 1989, they weren't very good. And Dirk was there, but he wasn't Dirk yet. And mm. I just thought it was such a cool story. And yeah, that is interesting. I, I still would like to know how much it's worth though. <laughs> right? I, yeah. I, I, I used to have some of paid. the collectible Barbies, but I was always just mad that I wasn't supposed to play with them. I never had a Barbie mm-hmm. that I wasn't allowed to play with. I mean, I guess I had to say I was allowed to, but my mom would be like, well, if you play with it, it won't be worth money. And I'm like, I'm seven. What's money? Right. <laughs> My aunt had a whole bunch of Barbies that she didn't play with and they just sat in the box. And uh, I was like, that's just a shame. Like, I had one that was in this, like, it was like a Millennium Barbie or something. It was in like this fancy dress. I'm just like, I want to play prom. Like, why can't I have the prom Barbie? You know what you should do? Do you still have it? Probably not. My parents sold the house and everything involved. Because I was gonna say you it's, should it's look somewhere and hanging see out with Sarah's Furby. If it was, <laughs> if it was worth anything, and if it isn't, you take that shit out and play with it. Well, that's also like all of the uh, Beanie Babies that we mm. told we could retire on. <laughs> oh, there's some new. I think is it a movie or a TV show yes, about Beanie movie. Babies? Is it's it Hulu movie. or Apple? It's a uh, Zach Galifianakis is the main guy. I don't know. <laughs> where it's going to be on, but I I think it's already out. It's either Apple plus or Hulu or something. I saw something like, it might've just been fake, but like after the success of Barbie, Mattel is going to start making movies for like all other like toys. Uh Mm. But like, no, I don't, I don't support that. They have yeah. uh, Rock'em Sock'em Robots. They have Hot Wheels. Hey, we have that. It's called Rocky. Right? <laughs> um, there's a Barney oh, yeah, movie Wheel. coming out about Barney. Uh, a Barney movie? Yeah. They're, they had the... Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Did you know that that's how... I think that's how Demi Lovato got and started? Selena Gomez. Yes. Oh, and Selena Gomez. Okay. That's because it's filmed here in Dallas. Yeah, that's true. I think I knew, I actually personally knew some kids that were on that from church, like way back oh, when. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, yeah, that's wild. Selena Gomez and Demi Lovato. Um, was there anything else in this in this movie that you guys stuck out to you? The hmm. choreography of, like, the fight. <laughs> Scene, mm. where it was just so obviously fake fighting <laughs> that it was like overly fake was phenomenal yeah mm-hmm. like when they get stabbed with a sword and it like visibly goes through the like under their arm yeah but like you yeah to notice and like they would smack them but their hand is like two feet from their face and they still fall <laughs> over <laughs> all of the bullets are actually nerf bullets and they like just fall off of them like it was just chef kiss it was so good uh but you know it was it was so out of place but i didn't mind it you know i was just like what is why are they fighting right now <laughs> is this what <laughs> beach off means i don't know but <laughs> I think you do know. <laughs> <laughs> they had so much angst. Um, it's funny because I found my, I was going through the garage and found like my baby dolls and my Barbies and all that crap from back in the day uh-huh. and um, just donated it or whatever. But this was like before the Barbie movie came out. Or before I even knew about it. This was like, I don't know, a couple months ago. And I was like, I probably should have actually looked at the Barbie. Like, I opened the box. I saw their Barbies. And then I just threw it into the stash. (gasps) And I'm like, I should have probably taken the time to, like, look through that. Because I know there was, like, some 
um, I think there was like a Barbie van, like a pink van or something and some other crap. And I'm like, I probably should have taken the time to look through that and seen if, you know, because who knows what things might, what is worth anything. I don't know. I feel like we can't talk about the Barbie movie and not talk about America Ferrera's monologue. Oh. We can't. True. Yeah, that was really good. It is, it's so good. And, like, I, I don't actually hate men, of course, <laughs> but her, everything she said was just so perfect. Like, it is literally impossible to be a woman. Mm-hmm. I loved that she repeated it multiple, multiple, multiple times to every Barbie mm-hmm. to snap them out of their thoughts we always or whatever. Have to be but somehow we're always doing it wrong. Yeah. Oh, so I got into kind of this. I try not to get into like Facebook, um, you know, debates or whatever. I mean, I used to back in the day, but anyway. Um, so I had just posted something about Barbie, like that I had seen it or something, and someone to someone commented, a guy saying. Like, he hadn't seen it, but he's basing it on this other review he saw about how, you know, it being supposedly anti-men, anti-motherhood, all this crap. But then talking about how, like, the speech, I don't know, because I was trying to, like, tell him how, like, there's a lot of crap that women have to deal with that men don't. And he's like, he's like, well there's crap that men have to deal with that women don't. And like, he starts trying to give examples and they're like really dumb examples. And I don't even remember what they were, but I was just like, and then he just, yeah, it kind of went, I eventually just deleted the pose. Cause I was like, whatever, but it's like men are so, or some are so like uptight about it. Like, I don't know what the deal is. Well, you know, it must be nice to be congratulated for every little tiny thing that you do. You know, when guys watch their kids, they Mm -hmm. call it babysitting. No, you're watching your child. Mm -hmm. Moms do that every day. And, you know, matter of fact, my friend, we were just talking about this yesterday. They were, they're leaving to go out of town today. And her husband still needed to pack some of his stuff. And she went took her kid to a birthday party dropped him off her and i went to a birthday party then she was picking up her son to take him to soccer and they have an infant baby that she was taking care of doing all of these things her husband went to work went and got his hair cut went and cleaned out the truck and then was gonna pack and she asked him was gonna ask him if he could watch the baby while she went to the soccer game because she was a little fussy and he was in such a mood that she's like, no, I'm not even going to ask him. She goes, you know, he, he wouldn't even pack if she, he had to watch her because he feels like he can't do anything else. If he's watching the baby, all he can do is watch the baby. And she can't multitask. very well. (laughs) Meanwhile, I'm packing and getting him ready for his party and his soccer and all this. And (laughs) she's like, he thinks he can't take the baby to the grocery store. And uh, he's it's like such a foreign concept to him. (laughs) Oh, that reminds me of. um, So the other day, this friend of mine was saying that she went to just go to the pet store to get some pet food. And like, and it's not very far. And she only got to the parking lot when her husband called her um, saying that their son was like asking for her and like kind of throwing it, whatever. And he couldn't handle it. And he asked her to come home. And so she didn't end up getting the dog food or anything like because he couldn't handle the freaking kid for like, you know, 15 minutes or whatever. If I was there, I would be like, I'll be there as soon as I can. And I would just go get the dog food. Yeah. I'm just like, (sighs) I mean, I'm not a mom, but that's what I would have done. Huh? What was that? Moms are superheroes. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
Sorry, Sarah, you're really hard to hear right now. Yeah, all of a sudden. How about now? Okay, that's good. Yeah. My bad. It's cool. I, t- I turned my mic down because my dogs were going crazy in the background, and uh, nobody wants that. Oh. Mm-hmm. But my dog is snoring in the background, but I don't think <laughs> y'all can hear it. <laughs> Mine were going crazy earlier as well. So, same Z's. But, um, but, yeah, it does kind of seem like when a man, you know, has to watch his child alone. He views it as babysitting and he can't handle it. I mean, this isn't true for every guy, I'm sure. Not all men, not all men, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Disclaimer. (laughs) (laughs) Asterisk. My dad is amazing. So I will. Oh, my dad's my best friend. Yeah. We have good dads. My my dad is everything. But... Not all men are. Yeah, and not yeah. all women are either, you know. Also true. Either. There's a lot of crap women out there. But yeah. people just kind of, a suck. lot of people suck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Across the board. Across the board. <laughs> <laughs> and none of their names are Sarah. Because Sarah's <laughs> are awesome. Yeah, Sarah's don't suck. Well, not you. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, um, hmm. let's be honest. <laughs> oh, I used to. <laughs> she was married for 21 years. <laughs> uh, well, 18 years, yeah. Oh, 18 years, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure she well, beats him off. He just wasn't Kenneth. <laughs> That's true, he wasn't Kenneth. Um, so, anything asking. else you guys have on this movie? Hmm. Do you think they'll make a second one? I mean, I don't <sighs> like with her, you know, being a human now or whatever. I don't know. They, they don't... did. It was called Life Size and it had Tyra <laughs> Banks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, or it's called, you know, every movie with a woman in it. <laughs> mm, yeah. Real life Barbie. I like the, here I'm just a dude, and that's enough. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. I mean, pretty much that's true here, too, in the real world. (laughs) Yeah, in the real world, exactly. (laughs) You know? But, no, I I, I love the monologue. I love the mother standstill so our daughters can look back and see how far they've come. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was was powerful. Mm Mm-hmm. And I, it's just, I don't, this movie was just everything. I love how the women worked together. They had a goal and they worked together until that goal was accomplished. Mm-hmm. There was no backstabbing. There was no cattiness. There was none of that. They all worked together until all the girls were back in the right mindset and could take over the patriarchy. Yeah, I think my favorite part of the whole movie was watching the unbrainwashed Barbies yes. pretend to be brainwashed Barbies. Right. <laughs> because every single time I was thinking, like, I have been in that exact situation. Like, I have sat there <laughs> with a guy, like, playing a song on a guitar, and I have to just smile and nod. I have been there being like, here's how this works. And I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> but let me pretend this is new information. Oh, like mm. I've we've all been on brainwashed Barbie. Mm-hmm. I have been working at the same place for four years, and there's this guy that I work with who has only been there maybe a year, but he worked somewhere else first in the same company, but has only been in our department for like a year. And he tells me something the other day, and I just looked at him like. Yeah, that's always been there. And he he was like, oh, my God, because I was telling him how he, you know, should organize some of his stuff that might help alleviate some of his activities that he has. He's like, oh, my boss showed me this thing here. Go, go, go to your activities. I was like, "Okay." so I go. He's like, yeah, see where it says subject and that arrow. Just push that and I'll put everything in alphabetical order. And I was like, he's mansplaining. Yeah. I, I had a guy mansplain how to make macaroni and cheese to me once. <laughs> so I think that just tops it. 
Mm. Like mm. most people don't realize when you're making, I'm, I don't even know what he was because it was something so mundane. And so like, um, no, everybody knows that you add the cheese to the macaroni. I don't even know. But literally mansplained making macaroni and cheese to me. <laughs> I had someone spend like 10 minutes explaining what, financial advisors are to me and then ask me what I do for a living. And I said, I'm oh. in financial advising. <laughs> <laughs> and basically everything you just said is not true at all. And he just walked away. He didn't even attempt to continue that conversation, which was the <laughs> correct move on his part. Um, <laughs> but I just, please, please stop. Please just assume women know things unless they tell you otherwise. Mm-hmm. Ugh. And I make really good mac and cheese for the record. Oh, you know, I did see the other day that there was a different way to make it on TikTok, and I was like, I have literally never made it that way before ever. Send, send it to me. Yeah. Are you talking about like the really weird ways? Okay, so that video, I, well, I think I sent it to both y'all. Of the, well, that you was not a lot of stuff. Huh? You sent me a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. I may have missed this one. Well, yeah, it was a t- I think it was yesterday. I sent you a TikTok. Oh, about the nachos, this yeah. Lady making nachos gross. in a pool, but that the lady who's doing the commentary on it. So I subscribed to her channel now, and I saw one today of someone. I think it was mac and cheese or some kind some kind of cheesy thing where they like just dump the whole block of cheese like Velveeta or whatever, and. Anyway, the commentary was just... Well, the one I saw was um, just like Kraft mac and cheese, like the box. And Mm. basically, you add the packet of cheese and butter and the milk like in a saucepan. That's what you're actually supposed to do. Yeah, and and do it that way. I don't subscribe to that. No. I want mac and cheese now. I never don't want mac and cheese. Well, well like, I follow the box instructions and it, it never says anything, or at least. Oh, it says it on the Annie's box. Oh. Um, for sure. Okay. And I, I don't really agree with most things on those boxes because based on those boxes, I am a family of four. So <laughs> I do you don't agree I, with the serving size. Right? No. I also think when it comes to like cheese in general, we need to stop saying serving size and start saying like dosage because it is medication. I'm not going to oh, lie. Oh, I know. Like shredded cheese is, that is medicinal. Mm. You know, it's funny because cheese is like my absolute fave and, and but it's almost like addictive. And so I was mm-hmm. like talking to someone about it and they're like, actually, there's something in cheese. I don't remember what it's called. Happiness. <laughs> joy but something about it has like an addictive it's some kind of, I don't know if it's a chemical or a and I don't know Opening. what it is. I need to look it up but something about like they were comparing cheese to like cocaine the Lord or and something Savior. no like to drugs or something like there's something that I don't know. Well, it is my that. drug of choice. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, my, I could eat like a whole freaking, well, I try not to, but if I wasn't paying attention or like, I could probably eat a whole block of cheese. I know I've probably eaten at least a fourth or a half before. I like cheese, one but my stomach does not agree with that sentiment Ugh. at times. See, I'm lactose intolerant intolerant. Yeah. Mm, not See, okay with me. My my doctor said that you're not lactose intolerant, but you can only handle so much lactose. So I don't remember who is, it was that said like I'm lactose intolerant intolerant and I just do not deal with people that are lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> it was a comedian, I don't know who said it, but just that is me. I think I've heard that as well. Yeah, um, my best friend is lactose intolerant, but like she doesn't care. She'll still, you know, have cheese or whatever and just deal with the consequences yep. of it. This it's is no longer um, about Barbie. Nope. <laughs> I was trying to bring it back. Um, so <laughs> if you guys were to give it a rating, we rank them one out of 10. Um, so if you wanted to do like seven out of 10 and then something from the movie, so you could be seven out of 10, 
uh, knuffs or knuffs um, or whatever you want to rank it. But let's start with Sarah number one. Well, which one is Sarah number one? Well, I guess since you talked. I'm offended Sarah. already. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, I would be Sarah number one because it's my. Okay. Show, so. But then we'll what's start your with rating? The, you, Sarah. Me? Yeah. Oh, so one to ten. One so ten, 10 being like. Ten's the best. An eight? Eight out of ten what? Um... I'll do, I'll do the Knuff thing or Knuff. <laughs> I'll go with that. All right. How about you, Sarah? <laughs> um, 14 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because the real world is forever and irrevocably, irrevocably messed up. And I want to live in Barbie land. That is true. <laughs> Come uh, on, Barbie. Let's go party. Uh, oh, 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 yeah. So I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 weird Barbies. This Mm. is such a good movie. I enjoyed it so much. I want to see it again. Um, I just haven't been able to yet. So I, I enjoyed it and I highly recommend people go and see it. Um, So, so good. Fantastic. Yes. Well, where can people reach either of you if they want to reach either of you? Uh, you can find me in Barbie land because I am resigning <laughs> from the real world. Um, or you can find my brand, Favorite Daughter Media, all over social, all over the internet. Um, FavoriteDaughterMedia.com. And yeah, that's about it. All right. And you say- uh, I guess the best place to find me would probably just be frugal.show. That's uh, my podcast you can contact me there and all of that good fun stuff awesome and you can always find me and contact me about all your favorite Barbies at two chicks talking flicks on all platforms and I, today it is three chicks <laughs> that is true <laughs> three chicks talking flicks um, and until next time toodles bye Barbie bye Barbie bye Barbie this episode was produced by Two Chicks Talking Flicks. Music was produced by Michael Girvani. If you like this episode, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to be a part of the show, have a movie suggestion, or just want to give us some love, you can email us at twochickstalkingflicks at gmail.com. Thanks, guys. Toodles. <laughs>